Off to Corsica now for a test of three high-end jet skis. The red machine is the Kawasaki Ultra LX, the grey jet is Yamaha's FX Cruiser HO, and the Sea Doo GTI SE 155 is in green. Three machines that were introduced between 2007 and 2008. We chose them because they are comfortable and offer versatile usage from family outings to towing a water skier to riding alone at full speed. Note that these jets all have the latest generation four-stroke motors. The Kawasaki has a 160 horsepower, 150 for the Yamaha and 155 for the sea -Doo. The sea -Doo is the smallest of the three at 3.22 metres in length versus 3.37 metres for the others. The Kawasaki is the heaviest at 380 kilograms. As for cost, the least expensive is the Sea Doo at around 12,690 euros, with the Yamaha FX Cruiser being the most expensive at 14,790. Design and equipment are the most important criteria. When it comes to looks, the Ultra LX gets the nod with its aggressive and very sporty allure. As for equipment, it has a fine instrument panel and a record storing capacity of 200 litres, but the set is just too big. The Sea Doo GTI SE 155 only comes in olive green. Either you like it or you don't. There's not much new on the design side, but all the same, the decoration is still quite nice and the amount of equipment offered for the price is hard to beat. Only downside, there is no trim and the column height cannot be adjusted. The Yamaha FX Cruiser is a real gold wing. With its twin seat, it seems a bit old fashioned. The design is modern though, and all the equipment you can see is standard issue. Slight edge to the Kawasaki for design and Yamaha for the equipment, but attention, the Sea Doo is the least expensive of the three. When it comes to rider comfort, all three lead the category. Easy to ride and very quiet, they can take on all sorts of weather conditions and make their way to the most beautiful spots Corsica has to offer. Another criteria is performance. The Kawasaki Ultra LX is very seaworthy and comfortable in wavelets. However, it does get docked points for the absence of a front protector and the rider does get soaked. As for speed, it's the slowest of the three at barely 90 km per hour and rather sluggish re-acceleration. It's a totally different story though with the Sea Doo GTI SC155. Lighter and narrower, it is more fun as well as more physical. The Rotax four-stroke three-cylinder engine is very reactive and you can do some nice wave jumping. The Sea Doo's Kareen slides nicely in the water and is very safe. This one nears perfection and is our favorite. The FX Cruiser HO is another philosophy. The latest generation Yamaha is very comfortable, much like a Goldwing built for the water. At the controls of such a machine, you can ride at full speed and shrink together corners without being thrown off. It does great jumps, absorbing the bumps, and the five position trim is a wonder to behold. The Japanese chose to take 25 kilos out of their jet in opting for the all new Nanoxel shell. At the end of this comparative test, we chose the FX Cruiser HO as the winner. It has the edge in design, equipment, and is the easiest of the three to ride, and is by far the most comfortable. However, its high price tag of 14,790 euros compared to the 13,990 for the Kawasaki and 12,690 for the sea -Doo is a bit expensive for a jet that isn't a sport model. Thank you. 
In conclusion, we really like the design of the Kawasaki Ultra LX, the excellent quality price ratio and sensations offered by the SeaDo GTIC, and respect to the Yamaha FX Cruiser HO for its comfort and standard equipment. We say fuel consumption for last. The three jets have an average fuel consumption of between 14 and 20 litres per hour, which comes in at around three full hours of running time.